If you and I know the way, why aren't we guiding people the way, the truth? And the way that they can have life and have it in abundance. Are we attracted to Jesus because of what and who He is? Accomplished to draw man back into ourselves, to draw them out of the hands of the enemy, to bring them back to your glory. Is there any other way?
Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend. Oh, I have lived. In the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. Give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Oh my life, you have been playing. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made Oh, I will see of the goodness of God Oh, I will see of the goodness of God Jealous for me, loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions, eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me Love, how he loves us all Oh, how he loves us How he loves us so Jealous for me, loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions, eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are now. Free your affections are for me. 
Good evening, everybody, and good evening to those who are watching right now live on Facebook. Welcome. Welcome. Yes. My voice might sound a little bit raspy. We're still recuperating from <laughs> the last three months and the weekend. But, you know, I want to just give a testimony unto the Lord. It's so beautiful when the Lord calls you to do something and he takes care of all the details. It's amazing. You know, for, for 10 years, this, this uh, Soldiers of the Cross Men's Encounter was the 10th one. For 10 years, Pastor and I have just been pushing forward and pushing forward and pushing forward and one more year and one more year and one more year. You know, and then thank God this year we had Pastor Ed and Darlene and everyone else that helped, you know, Donald, Jose, every all the men in the church who got involved and the women, you know, thank you so much. But this year was especially awesome because, you know, we went to a bigger venue and we had more expenses this year. And the, the bigger it grows, the more expensive it gets, okay? We all know that. It's just like family. The more kids you get, the harder it is to feed them, right? <laughs> and we feed all the guys on Saturday, too. So it was amazing. We were, we were a couple of dollars short uh, from $5,000 this year. That's what it cost to put on the, the men's event. And um, so, yeah, we did it. The Lord provided like he provides every year. But then on Sunday night, Pastor gets a text message, and it was somebody asking him, how much it costs to put on the conference this year. So he asked me, and I told him, well, it was just a couple of dollars short from 5000 I believe. And he said, I think somebody's going to put on an event because they want to know how much, you know, it cost us. And uh, so anyway, I tell him, I said, wouldn't it be just God? 
if tomorrow somebody would say, I want to reimburse you the $5,000 that you spent for the conference. And lo and behold, on Monday, he goes to another meeting and he comes home with a check for $5,000. There was, yes, amen, God's amazing. So there was a man said that he was so blessed by what went on in the conference, by seeing the man worship God and, and just the effort that took forth to put it, that he wanted to reimburse us the whole amount that we had spent. And the question that we had asked just a couple of days before the conference, because we were already dragging. You know, pastor had asked me, Hey, babe, this is the 10th year. Do you think that we should, like, stop it here and, uh, and then just move on to something else, you know? And, no, nope, the Lord answered our question by already providing for next year's conference. So he said, no, you're not stopping here, okay? So, so it's amazing, though. It's amazing, you know? When it's God's will, it's God's bill. He provides everything, and he always has, and he always will. And I just wanted to give that testimony because God is amazing. He is amazing. We could not put this together without his hand overseeing everything. We're just his servants. He leads us and guides us. My husband prays many, many hours before choosing his speakers. And, uh, and so it's just when you honor God, it's just amazing how he follows through. Amen. Amen. Let me open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we just get into your word, Heavenly Father, we're just, we're so amazed by you, Lord. We're so amazed. We're amazed that you would love a world full of sinners, that you would send your son to die on the cross and take our place. We're amazed, Heavenly Father, that you spoke everything into existence. We're amazed that you put the planets and the stars where you put them and you commanded them to stay, and to this day they still obey you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for your word that's truth, Heavenly Father. Thank you that your word goes forth and it accomplishes what you set it forth to accomplish, Heavenly Father, because it's the fruit that comes back to you, Lord. Everything is a testimony unto you, Lord. We're only your servants. Heavenly Father, as I bring forth the word today, Lord, I ask that the Holy Spirit will just watch over my lips, Lord. Let the words that come out of my mouth be yours and not mine. Pierce the hearts of the people, Heavenly Father. Feed each one, Heavenly Father, individually according to what they need in their heart and in their lives, Heavenly Father. But also, Lord, use the word, Heavenly Father, to bond us together as a family. Thank you so much for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, Heavenly Father. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Whew. So we're getting close to the end of the year, and we're finally on Acts 19. <laughs> We've been doing this since what, Ed, January? Yeah, the end of January, right? Wow. And the reason we started in the book of Acts is because the book of Acts is the foundation of on which the church was built. Um, you know, it, it's it, man, it, it's just going back to the grassroots of how Jesus wanted the church. You know, in the book of Acts, it tells us how to act. It really tells us how to act. And also the book of Acts is saying that the church needs to act. It's not only about speaking and believing, but it's about acting. We have to act. See, when God gave Pastor a vision 10 years ago to start this men's conference to reach men for Christ, to reach men to be leaders of their home, uh, he gave him that vision, and, and he acted on it. He acted on it. You know, he came to me and said, Babe, the Lord gave me a vision, and this is the vision that he gave me. And I said, You know what? Then let's go for it. Let's go for it, you know? When the Lord calls you to step out of the boat, you don't just stand there with your mouth open, you know, waiting for him to speak again. You obey. You move. You get out of the boat like, like Peter did. All Jesus had to say was, come, and Peter got out of the boat. We have to be the same. You know, we have to act on our faith. And so once we get through the book of Acts, then we're going to be going through subjects. We want to know subjects that really interest you guys, things that you struggle with maybe, things that you don't understand. 
so that we can go to the rest of the books in the New Testament and bring you the answers for the, the questions that you have. And so I think it's just going to be amazing. Uh, probably, we'll probably get through this, what, November, December? Yeah, probably about the end of November. So, see, we don't, we don't even get a breather. On, on, on Saturday night, you know, we got home, we're all tired, we had to come to church and unload, and then Sunday morning in church, and I said, I'm going to sleep all day Monday. Nope, I hit the ground running because there was a lot of things that had to be done, you know, so. But the Lord gives you spiritual rest. He refreshes you. So it's just amazing. So as we get into Acts 19, you guys, I am reading from the New King James Version. So if you have a different version, it might be a little bit different. So right now I'm going to be reading from Acts 19, 1 through 10. Acts 19, 1 through 10. We're going to go through the first 10 verses. And the word of the Lord says, and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Unto what then were you baptized? So they said, Unto John's baptism. And then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about twelve in all. And he went into the synagogues and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus, and continued for two years, so all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Amen. I love, I love that throughout the book of Acts, the way that Paul speaks with boldness. You know, sometimes you could just see it in the scripture, and sometimes it's actually said that, that he spoke with boldness or he went with boldness. Man, you know, sometimes I think when... <clears throat> When Peter fell, when Paul fell off of the horse, you know, he hit his head in just the right place <laughs> that the pride left him and the boldness came. It was just, wow. But I think when Jesus throws you off of your horse, <laughs> wow, you better be ready. So the 12 that he met is, is called the Ephesus Dozen that Paul ran into and that they had not received the Holy Spirit because they had not yet believed in the resurrected Christ. See, they were baptized. They knew. They knew about the baptism of John. They knew when John said that one is coming after me of whom I am not even worthy to untie his sandals. And, and so they knew about that baptism. But see, they didn't really realize that the Messiah had already came. The Messiah had already walked on the earth, that he lived a sinless life, that he was falsely accused, he was crucified, but that he resurrected. There were, they were disciples, but not of Christ. Rather, they were self-identified disciples of John the Baptist and knew nothing of the Spirit and his power. They had not yet taken the step of faith to follow Jesus as the risen Lord. They were still waiting for the Messiah. When the hearts of some were hardened, they began to speak evil of the way. And that, that's what it was called back then. It was called the way. Paul took his disciples and left the daily teaching at the synagogue and began teaching at the school of Tyrannus. 
If you guys don't know, Tyrannius was the owner of the school in Ephesus. It was the school for the Gentiles and the Greeks. So you know what, pretty much what Paul said, okay, you know what, I've been teaching here for a couple of months. Now you guys are rising up and you're speaking evil, not only of my teaching, but you're speaking evil of my Christ and you're speaking evil of disciples. So he kind of just shook the dust off of his feet and he moved on. See, and sometimes we need to do that because if not, we just get stuck in one place. We get stuck in one place. But Jesus even said, if you go somewhere and they do not receive you, then let your peace come back to you. You shake off the dust from your feet and you move on. And sometimes we have to take that example and use it in life also, that we have to shake off our past. Because if we don't shake the dirt off of our, from our past, then it's really hard for us to move into the future and what God has for us in the future. So next we're going to go to Acts 19, verses 11 through 20. And the word of the Lord says, Now God worked, now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons who were brought from his body to the sick and the disease left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Wow, notice how this is together, you guys. Okay, so they were brought to the body of the sick, and the disease left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Not all Ill illnesses, but a lot of illnesses are caused by an evil spirit. You know why? Because sometimes we get stuck on our high horse and, and, and we refuse to forgive somebody. So we, we leave a portal open in our spiritual life for demons to come. And, and so it, it's amazing here, not only here, but in other places uh, where you can see where evil spirits are tied to certain diseases. But sometimes it's because, you know what, it's, it's anger, it's hate, it's resentment, it's unforgiveness, it's not honoring our parents, it's not putting God first, it's, it's killing, murdering somebody with our words or our thoughts. Uh, it, you know, it, it's, and you look at the list of Ten Commandments, and you use those as a checklist to check yourself and say, okay, am I doing this? Is there anything before God? Do I have any other God before God? Have I murdered somebody? Have I slandered somebody with my mouth? Have I committed adultery? Have I looked at somebody with lust in my eyes? You go down that checklist, and you know what? None of us, none, none of us meet that standard, but we have to purpose. So the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. And then some of the Itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sibia, a Jewish priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Wow. So the evil spirit talks back and says, I know Paul. I know Paul. Paul serves the Christ. I know Jesus. Well, who do you think you are? <laughs> who do you think you are? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was, then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. He not only mocked them saying, who do you think you are? He ripped off their clothes and sent them off naked and wounded and embarrassed. And <laughs> Can you imagine? This became known both to all the Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the name of the Lord was magnified. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 50, pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. 
In verses 11 and 12, we read about the sick and the disease being healed and the evil spirits being cast out. Just by touching, by being touched by Paul's aprons and handkerchiefs. But we can't focus on that. We need to remember if you go back to the very first verse, it says, but we must focus on verse 2. It says, now God. Now God. On verse 11, I'm sorry, not verse 2, verse 11, it says, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. See, sometimes we think, oh, you know, so by, by we have this little holy handkerchief or holy water or holy dirt. Mm -mm. The only one that's holy is God Almighty and Jesus Christ, and we have to remember that. There is none holy, there is none holy and righteous but the Lord. So, and so in verses 11 and 12 where we read about the sick being healed and the evil spirits being cast out just by touching Paul's aprons or handkerchiefs. But we have to focus on verse 11 where it says, Now God. Now God. The miracles that were done through Paul or through us have very little to do with us. It is the hand of God through his Holy Spirit. There's been times that the Lord has sent Pastor and I to hospitals to be with the families because <clears throat> they've called the families in to say goodbye to their loved one. You know, they're not going to make it through a night. They're on life support. There's no more hope. They're brain dead or whatever. And, and the Lord has really put it on our hearts to to on, on certain people because we all have an appointment with God and we don't go over that appointment. But there are certain people who the enemy has been trying to snatch their life before time. So the Lord will call us and say, lay hands on their heart, lay hands on their brain, call them back from the dead. They will live and not die and they will proclaim my wondrous works. And there's been times that I remember the one time this friend of pastor called and said, hey, my mom, She's not going to make it through a night. Pastor, can you come and be with us? Can you come and pray with us? Can you, can you bless my mom before she goes to be with the Lord? <clears throat> and the Lord said, told us that the, that the enemy had been trying to snatch her life since she was a little girl, but she had not fulfilled her purpose for us to lay hands on her and call her back from the dead, and we did. And then we left the hospital probably about 10, 11 o'clock at night, and the phone rings about 7 o'clock in the morning, and it's pastor's friend, and say, hey, they took my mom off life support. She woke up. She's sitting down eating breakfast. She wants coffee. I mean, the doctors and the nurses are freaking out. But that's the hand of God. I had nothing to do. Just, we're servants. We didn't do it. That was the hand of God using the Holy Spirit to heal that person because their purpose had not been fulfilled yet. This is why the Jewish exorcists got their butts kicked by the demons. They knew of Jesus, but they did not have a personal relationship with him. This goes back to the book of Revelation that Jesus says, many will come to me in that day and they will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? And he will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Because we can know of Jesus, but until you have a personal relationship with him, the power of the Holy Spirit and the authority that is given to us through the power of the Holy Spirit does not indwell us yet. So therefore, they did not have the power or the authority to do what they were doing. Notice that the evil spirit knew that they had no part with Jesus. Not even the seven sons of the Jewish priest had authority over the evil spirits. The demon stripped them of their clothes before he gave them a beating. He left them naked and wounded. But God still got his glory. Through all of this, because many turned away from black magic over the fear of the Lord that came over them, they even burned all of their witchcraft books in the sight of all, totaling 50,000 pieces of silver. In those days, it equaled about 5.5 5 
million dollars. But today, it would equal to $1.5 billion. I did that research today. Look at, look at how much evil was in Ephesus. They had all those books of black magic, of witchcraft, it totaled $5.5 million in those days. 50,000 pieces of silver. But still the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. God has always and will always prevail in any situation because exactly what the devil meant for evil, God turned it for good. Isn't God amazing? I love serving the Lord because I know there's not any battles that I can lose. He goes before me. He fights my battles. You know, there's, yes, he allows us to go through a storm. He allows us to go through a fire, but we don't go through it alone. He walks with us. It's amazing. Okay, we're going now to next, Acts 19, verses 21 through 41. And this one is called the riot at Ephesus. And the word of the Lord says, When these things were accomplished, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Era, Era oh gosh. Yes. <laughs> Aristus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a time. I am going to find an app that teaches me how to pronounce all these names because as we've gone through the book of Acts, we're stuck sometimes, but... We chop up their names, but that's okay. The truth still goes forth. And about that time, there arose a great commotion about the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, uh oh, babe, Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines to Diana of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together, the workers of similar occupation, and said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. There's the prosperity gospel started right there. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned many away, many people saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificent magnificence destroyed whom all Asia and the world worship now when they heard this they were full of wrath and they cried out saying great is Diana of the Ephesians so the whole city was filled with confusion and rushed into the theater with one accord, having seized Gaius and Arch, Arch, who, Arde, Ardicus, <laughs> Macedonians, Paul's travel companions. And when Paul wanted to go into the people, the disciples would not allow him. And then some of the officials of Asia, who were his friends, sent to him pleading that he would not venture into the theater. <clears throat> Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and most of them did not even know why they had came together. There was just a bunch of mitoteros there following the crowd to see what was going on, and it turned out to be a protest, and a lot of people didn't even know what, they were, what was going on or, or why, but they were just there. There was a lot of confusion. You know, and I was thinking today, I thought, you know what, I bet there was a lot of confusion because you know what, a lot of demons had to leave a lot of people. And when they leave them, they're going through a dry land. And, and it causes a lot of confusion. Even when you're trying to get out of witchcraft, it's going to cause a lot of confusion in your mind because that demon's always going to be trying to come back into your life. 
you know, and, and so it becomes a struggle, it becomes a fight, but it's not one that we can't overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude and the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander mentioned, motioned with his hand and wanted to make his defense to the people. But when they found out that he was a Jew, all with one voice cried out for about two hours, great is Diana of the Ephesians. And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is a temple guardian of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Zeus? Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For you have brought these men here who are neither robbers of the temple nor blasphemers of your goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open and there are pro councils. Let them bring charges against one another. But if you have any other inquiry to make, it shall be determined in the lawful assembly. For we are in danger of being called in question for today's uproar. There being no reason which we may give to account for this disorderly gathering. And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. <clears throat> See, the man named Demetrius was a silversmith who made silver shrines of the goddess Diana. Diana was the goddess of the wild animals and of the hunt. She was identified with the Greek goddess Artemis, the daughter of the Roman god Jupiter. Although she was primarily associated with hunting, Diana was also revered as the goddess of the woods, wild animals, fertility, childbirth, and the moon. Diana is still worshipped to this day in modern neo-pagan religions and Wicca. Can you imagine? I was researching that today. Go and research it. The goddess Diana is still worshipped to this day. She's still worshipped. The tradesmen of Ephesus despised Paul because the temple of Diana was considered one of the wonders of the world. And people would come from all over the world to buy silver statues and the ones made of wood and clay. Paul was driving all these men to bankruptcy and they didn't like it. But it's amazing how the worship of the goddess Diana still exists to this day. You know, as, as, uh, as I was studying Acts 19, you know, and, and I'm, I was thinking today, I'm like, you know, Lord, it's just refresh us, refresh our body. You know, we've all just been feeling physically and spiritually just tired. And, and I was like, Lord, refresh my body. Like, it's just really, like, I just feel tired. I didn't want to get out of bed. And, and you know, it's not even because we have a new mattress. <laughs> Pastor thinks it's because we have a new mattress. It's not the new mattress. We're exhausted. And, and then I started to think, can you imagine how Paul and them felt? They didn't have a car. We get in our car, and we turn the key, and we drive where we're going. They either borrowed a horse, or they walked, or they went by a boat, or a ship, a donkey. I mean, we have it easy. Can you imagine? And, and as you're reading, we're already in Acts 19, and you just see Paul. He keeps going and going and going and going, and he gets beat, and he gets shipwrecked, and he gets stoned. And, you know, at one point it says he even... Uh, in, in the book of Timothy, he tells Timothy that he even survived the lion's den. And, and so, and, and we're thinking, we're tired? <laughs> can you imagine? That poor guy had gallos on his fingers, on his toes. I can only imagine what these men had to go through to lay the foundation for us to be here today. See, and we have the easy part because what? We have, they didn't have the Bible. 
They didn't have the Bible. We do. We can go back and read these stories and they encourage us to keep going. We can read the Psalms. We can read the, the Proverbs for wisdom. And, and, and we have this and they didn't. They were building the foundation for this. They gave their lives for this, for us. And you know, the Bible says that we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, and I bet you it's all the apostles. Can you imagine Peter up there saying, what are they doing? <laughs> I thought I was stubborn. <laughs> it's like, you know, can you imagine? Peter and Paul and Luke and John, and, and they're looking down and they're like, okay, here comes another soldiers of the cross encounter. And we're all preparing for five, six hundred, seven hundred men. And that place was half empty. You know what? What did we get? About 130, 140 each day, give, it, give or take. And, and a lot of effort goes in. It, it really breaks our heart, you know. And, and, uh, and Darlene was even telling me how she wept because there wasn't, there wasn't a, a lot of men there. It, it wasn't, but you know what? I bet the balloon fiesta was packed. I bet this Sunday every football stadium will be packed. Hunting season. All these things. And, 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 and then we wonder why the world is in the condition it's in. If we would take the example of these men, man, Paul was going from place to place to place, to synagogue to synagogue to synagogue, preaching the word, preach the word, preach the word, preach the word, preach the word. And in many places, the word has been watered down so much, you're drinking watered down Kool-Aid. You know, but if we would follow the example of these men, and I had to ask for forgiveness, and I'm like, Lord, man, it's like Paul could have said, okay, you know what, I already did my part. I already did my part. But then you're going to see in chapter 20, Paul's still going. And then he has this few faithful with him. Some walked away from him. Some stood with him, his beloved son, Timothy, his spiritual son. You know, and it's just like in the ministry. We have people we raise up, we pour our wisdom into, we pour our time into them. And then when, when you know, the dirt hits the fan, we're looking around and we're standing alone. And it gets discouraging sometimes. And I'm sure it got discouraging for Paul when, when he was stopping on the side of the road to stick his feet in a little pond of cold water because I'm sure he had blisters. Okay, they didn't have porta potties along the way. <laughs> okay, these poor guys had to look for somewhere to use the bathroom. And and then the one thing that the Lord brought to mind today. He said, "They honored my Sabbath. Honor your day of rest. Honor me with your day of rest. If God." creator of all, took a day to rest. We need to take a day to rest. And the Lord really showed me that today. And we really do. We need to take a day of rest. You know, saying, you know, we can't just sit there and do nothing. Before, they couldn't light a fire. <laughs> they can like, oh my gosh, like, why are you picking corn? And, and you know, so you can't go to the grocery store and pick corn. But but really think about it, guys. Think about what these men went through. And we have a car to go wherever we go. And then we come home to a nice hot shower, to a nice soft mattress, to a roof over our head. Can you imagine the times that they were sleeping out on the trail and now some they wake up and they're trying to find somewhere to go under because it's pouring rain. I mean, just think about it. Put yourself in their shoes and realize the privileges that we have today that they didn't have. And then just allow God to work in your heart and refresh you 
And you know what? These guys are watching us. There are witnesses, that cloud of witnesses. Guys, come on. Let's give them something to cheer about. I'm sure now, by now, Peter's walking around heaven saying, isn't there a rock here somewhere? I'm going to stone these people. And you know, no rocks in heaven, you know, or Peter would be knocking them down. Seriously, I think we have all fallen short. I think we have all fallen short. And the biggest place we fall short is we complain and we complain and we complain. And we really don't have anything to complain about. I don't know about you, but at the end of the day, I lay down on a soft mattress. I have a roof over my head. I have a warm blankie. I have my puppy. I have my husband when he's not working graveyards all the time. You know, I wake up to a hot cup of coffee, a nice shower, my word. I have shoes. I even thank God for my dirty dishes now because if I have dirty dishes, it means I have food to eat. We have to count our blessings. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for this evening, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your word that's truth, Lord. We thank you for your word that not only corrects us, Heavenly Father, but it encourages us. Thank you for these mighty, mighty men of God who just blaze the trail and set the example for us to follow, Heavenly Father. Forgive us when we complain, Lord. Thank you for their lives, Lord. Thank you that you allowed their lives to be put onto paper that we might have an example. You didn't call for perfect men, but you called for men who were willing to allow you to perfect them. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father. Thank you so much that you've taken us in with all of our faults and our mistakes and our past. And you've created a new creation within us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, leads us, and guides us. Thank you so much for our health, Heavenly Father, for our home. Thank you, Lord, that we have family that loves us. And I always thank you, Heavenly Father, for the honor and privilege, Heavenly Father, that you've given me, Lord, to speak your truth. I love you, Lord. I adore you. I never forget where you brought me from, Heavenly Father but I always look forward to where you're taking me. Lord, I ask that you bless each and every person here as we go home. Lord, give us traveling mercies. Help us to get home safely, Heavenly Father. I pray for those who were not here this evening. I pray that all is well with them, Heavenly Father. For those who are feeling ill, Heavenly Father, I just pray that the Holy Spirit will come down upon them right now, Lord, and give them a double anointing of healing through the blood of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father. I thank you for my husband, Heavenly Father, who is the shepherd of this place. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that I am under his authority, Lord, and that he allows me to come up here and share my heart, Lord. Bless him abundantly, Heavenly Father. Surround him with godly men who will lift him up and not tear him down. Surround him with men who will encourage him, Heavenly Father. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father. But most of all, like always, we thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus, we thank you for the cross. Lord, our life should be surrounded around Christ and him crucified. And he rose, Lord, to give us a new life. We thank you. We bless you. We call you holy, holy, holy to the Lord God Almighty. And we give you all the honor, praise, and glory in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. We're glad that you tuned in. I pray and hope that the message that you just heard was a blessing to you. You know, the word of God comes in and transforms our lives from the inside out. What an amazing opportunity. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Right now, if you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity right now, and I would be honored uh, to pray with you right now. If you've never given your life to Jesus, just repeat this prayer with me. And uh, believe in with all of your heart. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that we will be saved. And the Bible also says that Everyone that calls out to the name of the Lord shall be saved. So right now, if you just repeat this prayer with me, say, Heavenly Father, I choose to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. 
and that you raised them from the dead to give me new life. So now, Jesus, I repent of my sin. I turn away from, from my wicked way of living. I turn my heart to you. From this day forward, I want to serve you, and I want to do everything that I can to be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just pray to that prayer right now, I just want to welcome you into the kingdom of God, into his household. If you have a church, I, or you don't have a home church, get plugged into your home church, wherever you may be. If you're in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area, we would love to have you uh, join us for worship here at Majesty Worship Center. Our address is as follows, 3250 Coors Boulevard, Northwest, Suite B, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87121. We would love to meet you. We would love to, to fellowship with you. So I just pray that you would get plugged into the house of God. God bless you, and thank you for watching.